Now, what if I told you that your mindset might be a key player in the battle against small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? I'm Kirsty, registered nutritional therapist at the Optimum Health Clinic. And in this video, we'll explore the crucial link between SIBO and stress. Okay, so let's explore the crucial connection between SIBO and stress. So firstly, what is SIBO? Well, SIBO is quite simply an overgrowth of unhelpful bacteria in the small intestine that can lead to symptoms that are either local to the gut, such as bloating, acid reflux or heartburn, or maybe nausea, loss of appetite, or a change in bowel motility. But beyond the gut discomfort, SIBO can also cause a range of symptoms that are felt more widely throughout the body. And those include brain fog, fatigue, joint pain, headaches, and sometimes even nutrient deficiencies and weight loss. So now we know what SIBO is, let's turn our attention to the inner workings of your gut. Now the health and maintenance of your gut plays a pivotal role in determining your risk of developing SIBO. So our focal point here is something called the migrating motor complex or MMC for short. And I want you to think of MMC as our housekeeping system in the gut. Picture it as a diligent cleaning system which sweeps through the bowel regularly and keeps it clear of food and bacterial clutter throughout the day. However, if this housekeeping system is damaged or sluggish, it opens up the door to problems. And this in turn can lead to symptoms like gas and bloating and ultimately the shopping list of SIBO related symptoms that we just explored. So this demonstrates why our MMC is so central to reducing the risk of SIBO development. So now we know the significance of our internal housekeeping system. Let's explore some of the factors that can directly impact upon it. So factors that can slow down or damage our MMC include toxins, certain medications, overeating, maybe head injuries, infections, and even in some cases, autoimmune conditions. But one of the most important considerations here is stress, because the MMC is part of our central nervous system, and therefore both stress and its impact on our vagus nerve can directly influence our MMC activity and therefore our SIBO risk. So you may find that your SIBO symptoms actually increase through periods of stress and trauma. And this is simply because stress results in a slowing of transit through the bowel, allowing bacterial growth and fermentation of food, which sets up the perfect environment for SIBO to develop and thrive. And that understanding these connections is crucial but equally important is knowing what we can do to support the health and maintenance of our gut with the impact of stress in mind. So stress management and nervous system regulation are both key to the function of our MMC. And we can achieve these things by using a number of tools from the OHC toolkit. Stress management isn't the only part of the SIBO protocol by any means, but let me explain why it may be the most important. Now, a well-considered SIBO protocol will generally include a number of steps, the use of antibiotics or antibacterial herbs, maybe strategies to restore the health of your gut wall, tools to enhance your digestive capacity, and then maybe finally, a focus on restoring a healthy gut microbiome. And these are all really important steps in the process of dealing with SIBO. But it's essential to emphasize here that neglecting support for stress reduction and its impact on our migrating motor complex could lead to a recurring and persistent SIBO loop. Because if we don't have a good housekeeping system, then we set up the perfect environment for SIBO to continue to develop and reoccur. Therefore, the use of psychology tools to address maladaptive stress response, anxiety, trauma, and stress 
is really key to our SIBO protocol. And that's alongside nutrition and lifestyle tools which help to support our adrenal glands, the vagus nerve, and to generally calm the nervous system overall. And this integrative work can be really effective at calming the stress response and improving the motility of the gut. Thank you for watching and if you found this video helpful, please like it and click the subscribe button below. Now I'd love to hear a little more from you about how you prioritise your gut health amidst a busy lifestyle and the challenges of day-to-day -day life. Do share your tips and challenges in the comments below and let's create a space where we can all benefit from our shared experiences. Equally, if you're ready to take the next step in your own gut health journey, do schedule a free discovery call via the OHC website for a chance to discuss your own specific situation and explore how our dedicated team can assist you on your journey to a healthier gut.